Hello everyone, welcome to another discussion of our course and module 5 covers about Kirchhoff's rules as well as RC circuits. Okay, so um, it is being explained properly already in your module what Kirchhoff's rules are as well as RC circuits and just let me give you examples that I'm going to solve um, in this lecture recording. Okay, so I will share to you my screen. So that you will see our first problem that we're going to solve today. All right, so there it is. Okay, so you are given a circuit diagram wherein you have two voltage sources on each side. You have three resistors that are connected in parallel series connection. All right, and we are going to get the current that is flowing in each resistor. So we are going to get I1, I3, as well as I2 by using our Kirchhoff's rules. So there are two um, rules, the loop rule as well as the junction rule. So we are going to apply them in solving for the current in each resistor in this circuit diagram, okay? So can we take a photo or a screenshot of our circuit diagram and I will be sharing to you another screen for our solution. All right, so have you taken the photo already? As I am sharing to you another screen. Okay, so let me check if my screen is already there. All right, it's there. Oh, I haven't erased the previous one. Okay, for a while, I'll be deleting the pages first. So with that, I will be sending a PDF file of the solution of our problem for our discussion this morning. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have our circuit diagram. Let us draw again our circuit diagram. So we have our R1, we have our R3, and R2 is here, voltage source is here, as well as on the other side. Okay, so we have 10 volts, and our R1 is 10 ohms, our R2 is 20 ohms, and our R3 is 40 ohms. And the other voltage source is 20 volts. Okay, so what is S in this problem? We are asked for the current flowing in each resistor. So we have our current flowing in this direction. We have our I1. And we also have our current in this way. Because why? This is positive, this is negative, and this is positive, and this is negative. From higher to lower potential. Okay, so I always reiterate that one. That will be our I2. And our I3, of course, going down, that is I3. So we are asked I1, I2, as well as I3. Okay, so how are we going to solve this problem using our Kirchhoff's rule? Okay, so first and foremost, we have the loop rule. Okay, and we also have the junction rule. So there are two loops that we have here. We have our first loop that is going that direction. We have that as loop A. And let us have this as our loop B. Okay. So in our loop A, we are going to get the summation of all, of all voltages. And that would be equal to zero. Okay, that is according to Kirchhoff's um, loop rule. Okay, so in our loop A, we have V1, V3, as well as the 10 volts. So we have that as V1 plus V3 minus 10 volts is equal to zero. Okay, and in our loop B, we have our V3 as well as V2 for loop 3. Okay, so we have our uh, V2 plus V3 minus 20 volts. 
this time because this is our loop B. Okay, so I would just erase that. Minus 20 volts is equal to zero. Nako, ano po to sa space dali, guys? Erase, erase, erase. Okay, again, loop B, V2 plus V3 minus 20 volts is equal to zero. So, we can have our our equations now we have two equations for this okay so from ohm's law please be reminded of ohm's law it is v is equal to ir so we have our v1 to be i1 r1 plus i3 r3 is equal to 10 i will do away with the units now okay and on the other side i2 r2 plus i3 r3 and that is equal to also 20. all right so our i are what is s okay so we can plug in the given resistance values so our r1 is 10 ohms so i will do away with the units again so we have 10 i1 plus r3 is 40 ohms so 40 i3 is equal to 10. Our R2 is 20 ohms. So 20, 20 R2 plus 40 I3 is equal to 20. Okay, so we have our two equations now. We have 10 I1 plus 40 I3 is equal to 10. And 20 R2 plus 40 I3, sorry, this is I2. Okay, that should be I. And this should be 2. Okay, that is 2. Erase, erase na lang para maklaro. Alright, TI2 plus 40I3 is equal to 20. Okay, so we have our unknowns, I2, I1, I2, I3. Now, we can use our junction rule for that. Okay, so we have our two junctions, this one here. We can have that as junction 1. We can have also our junction here as junction 2. But we will just only be using junction 1. For junction 1, what goes in must come out. So I1 is getting in and I2 is also getting in and what comes out is I3. So we have that formula. Now, three equations, three unknowns. We can now solve for the unknowns. Okay, so... Um, we can use I3 to be equal to I1 plus I2, so just substitute. All right, so 10 I1 plus 40 I3, substitute I3, which is I1 plus I2, and that is equal to 10. Okay, on the other hand, 20 I2 plus 40 I3 again is I1 plus I2, and that is equal to 20. Oh, all right. So we have our our two equations and two unknowns for I1 and I2. Okay, so this is 40 again. So just do your math with this. Uh, I, I know you are very good in math already. Okay, so we have 50 I1 plus 40 I2 is equal to 10. And 60 rather, oh no, oh yeah, 40 I1 plus 60 I2 is equal to 20. So I don't need to show everything to you guys, okay? It's just do your math. You have two equations, you have two unknowns. I know you know how to solve this. And we get our I1 to be negative 0 0.143 amperes our i2 is 0 0.429 amperes and since you got i1 and i2 just substitute here in this formula for from the junction rule you get i3 to be 0 0.286 amperes okay so that's how you're going to solve for the current flowing in each resistor in this circuit diagram okay now um i will give you an example also for rc circuit 
Okay, so there are there are um what do you call this um sample problem also in your module and you have it in your textbook as I've shared to you and we also have our 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 sample computations now. Okay, for RC circuits, we already learned that RC circuits, that is a combination of both a resistor as well as a capacitor in a circuit. So, is that is my screen there? Maybe I'm not sharing again my screen. Okay, it's there. Okay, so you are given an RC circuit. So, we have our voltage source, our resistor, and our two capacitors. Now you are asked for the current in the loop at time one second of charging. And you are also asked for the energy stored in each capacitor at that given time. Okay, so um, take a screenshot again of our problem so that later when we saw we can glance at it. All right, because I will be sharing again my notes with you. Checking if it's there. All right, it's there. Okay. So we have again our... Wait for a moment. Okay, just making sure that it's there. All right, so we have our RC circuit. Okay, drawing again. Sorry for my drawing, guys. I'm not good at this. Okay, oh. This is 10 volts. And this is 10 ohms. And we get 20 microfarad as well as 10 microfarad. Okay, now first and foremost, you have to condense your circuit. Okay, so we have to get the equivalent capacitance. So again, for series connection for capacitors, 1 over the equivalent cap capacitance, 1 over 20 microfarad. I will do away with the units again, guys. So our equivalent capacitance is 6.67 microfarad. Okay, so by the way, I had an error in computation in the capacitors in series and capacitors in in parallel video or lecture recording so um i already edited the description part of that video and kindly take a look at that on that computation error all right so we get our equivalent capacitance already okay so with that we can get our tau which is our time constant which is equivalent to the resistance times the capacitance so our resistance is 10 ohms and we should have our capacitance to be in farad. So we have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 6 farad. Your resistance must be in ohms and your capacitance must be in farad. So our time constant, which is tau, is equivalent to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5 second okay so um why did that become second okay so um just just do the units the ohms and the farad what are they equivalent to okay so you can get the second all right so using our formula for the current current is equal to the voltage source over the resistance multiplied by e to the negative t over tau okay now our our voltage source is 10 volts and our resistance is 10 ohms e to the negative our time is one second and our tau is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5 seven. okay now computing for 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 the value for 1 over 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5 second, and doing that um, e to the negative uh, 14,000 something, the answer would be 0. And 0 times 
10 over 10 is 1, 0 times 1, that is also 0. So we get our answer for the current, which is 0 ampere. Now, getting the energy stored in each capacitor at that given time, we need to get the voltage value first in each capacitor. Okay? So, um, in, in getting the voltage value, we have to get the total charge of the circuit that we have. Okay? So, in getting the total charge, you have Q is equal to CV. We already learned about that. All right, so our equivalent capacitance was 6.67 times 10 to the negative 6 farad times the voltage 10 volts. Our total charge for our whole circuit is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5 coulomb. Okay, now we can now get our, our voltage charge in each capacitor. Okay, so... For, for the voltage of our 20 microfarad capacitor, we have still Q is equal to CV. So V is equal to Q over C. So our Q is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 5 column over 20 times 10 to the negative 6 farad. You get 3.33 volts for our 20 microfarad capacitor. Okay, so we can now get our energy for our 20 microfarad capacitor. And our energy formula is 1 half CV squared. All right, so 1 half C 20 times 10 to the negative 6 farad and the voltage 3.33 volts squared. Never forget to square that one. And the energy stored in the 20 microfarad capacitor is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 4 joules. And how did that become into joule? Okay, so do the units again. What farad is equal to, all right, and what voltage is equal to. Okay, so using the same formulas in getting the voltage, for for the other capacitor and in getting the energy for the another capacitor just the same process i will just give you the answer the voltage for the 10 microfarad capacitor is 6.67 volts and the energy for the 10 microfarad capacitor is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 4 joules this will be oh no what was asked is only the, the energy stored. So that would be our answer. All right. So I had given you an example uh, or I had shown you how to solve a problem using Kirchhoff's rule. And I also showed you how to solve a circuit with both resistor and capacitor or RC circuits. So in your modules, you have your, your practice problems there and you can answer all of those from the, from the solutions that I had given you in this lecture recording. Okay, so thank you very much for coming to class, for watching this. And if you have questions, you may email me on Canvas and if you want further clarifications, you may come to our discussion hour. So read, read, read your module, study your module before discussion hour per week. And our deadline for our module submission every Sunday midnight. And hopefully that you're not going to do cramming so that you still have time in, in, in in giving me your questions or in, in asking me your clarifications, okay? So um, with that, if you are going to work on your module Saturday night, uh, Saturdays and Sunday, I don't work, so I cannot answer your questions. So better work on your module before weekends so that I can answer your questions, okay? So thank you very much again. Um, see you next recording.